In this video, we will cover an introduction to scientific notation. Let's start with a couple of quantities. First, the diameter of the moon. So if we stood on one point on the moon and drilled right through the moon, right through the center to a point on the other side of the moon, how far would that be in meters? Turns out, 3,500,000 meters, approximately. And how about diameter of an electron, one of the tiny particles floating around a nucleus of an atom? Also in meters, diameter of an electron is about this, five quadrillionth of a meter, or five femtometers, you could call it. Now, these are quantities that do come up in science quite a bit, so it can be useful to have a way of writing numbers without having to write all these zeros. And if you encounter a question where you're actually working with a few of these large numbers or a large number and a small number, for example, how many electrons will fit along the moon's diameter, there even turns out to be a way that we can represent these numbers without all those zeros, and the way makes it a little bit easier to accomplish some of these calculations, like the division we would do in this problem. First, let's talk about large numbers. And for our first example, we'll use 1 million. Now, the idea behind scientific notation, it's actually kind of similar to something that we do already, just with words, that we could say this number is one million. All those zeros, those six zeros we know, equals a million, so we've brought that one over and just said one million. But what I want you to think about when it comes to scientific notation is how do we get large numbers? Think about starting with one and multiplying by ten. Remember what happens when we multiply a number by 10. The result is that we just end up sticking extra zeros onto the end of the number. And then if I multiplied 10 times another 10, it would equal 100, a 1 with two zeros. So looking at this number 1 million, I could think about each of these extra zeros as being a result of multiplying by 10. So I could say that 1 million is really 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. But if I wrote out all those tens, I haven't really helped myself in terms of coming up with a quicker way to write these large numbers. So how could we write this repeated multiplication of 10? And you are right if you're thinking about exponents. So six of those tens multiplied together, we could say is 10 to the sixth. So this number 1 million looks like this in scientific notation, 1 times 10 to the sixth. And the idea is, we pull out that number part, the digit that's not a zero, and then all those other zeros we think about, well, how many tens did we have to multiply to get all those zeros to show up? Let's do one more quick example, 32 million. And another reason for me showing you this example is to show one detail about scientific notation that we really have to be careful about. So 32 million, you would say, in words I could put the 32 and then the word million. So in scientific notation, you might say, I have my 32, and then my six tens that would bring my 32 up to 32 million when I do that multiply. Now the fact is, when you work with a set of several numbers in scientific notation, it's easier to do calculations and to compare those numbers when the number part in scientific notation is kept small enough to be a number that's in between 1 and 10. And in fact, we don't even like to use 10. So some number greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So how do we handle this, that we have a 32, definitely a number much larger than 10, too large that we would want to use in scientific notation? So now think about, what if I did this multiplication, 3.2 times 10? Hopefully you're remembering that multiply by 10 doesn't just put a zero onto the end, but it, with decimal numbers, we think that it moves the decimal point one place to the right. So 3.2 times 10 equals 32. So if I said don't use 32, but use 3.2, how many tens, how many times 10 do we have if we go from 3.2 up to 32 million? So we'd need 110 to get us up to 32, and then six more. So 3.2 times 10 to the seventh equals 32 million. We're gonna to get to a couple of examples pretty quickly, but what I want you to think about going forward is that we're not going to focus just on all the zeros we see, but we'll focus more on this idea of moving a decimal point. 
Let's go back to the number 3,500,000, our diameter of the moon in meters, and let's take another large number for an example, 787 billion, which was the number of dollars in the stimulus bill passed by Congress back in February 2009. 787 billion, many, many zeros, nine of them there. Now my approach when it comes to scientific notation is to think about how many times am I moving a decimal point. So first detail that we should cover is, well, where are the decimal points currently in each of these numbers? With these numbers, the decimal points are actually right on the tail end, and we don't usually write those numbers unless we actually have decimal numbers after that point that we want to include. But we should definitely understand that that's where those decimal points currently are. Next, we take just the number part. We can ignore all these zeros for now, but all the other digits that are not zeros, we need to use those as the number part in scientific notation. And Remember, we want to keep this a number between 1 and 10, and basically the way to do that is you always put the decimal point right after the first digit. So with 3,500,000, we pull off the 3 and the 5, we're putting the decimal point right behind the 3. Scientific notation will always use times 10 to some power. That's how we're indicating this decimal point moving. So if the point is starting right behind the 3, how many places will it have to move? And remember, each time it moves a place to the right, this is because we're multiplying by 10. So we're moving it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. So in scientific notation, that means we just multiplied by 10 6 times. So 3,500,000 in scientific notation, 3.5 times 10 to the 6th. Our other example, 787 billion, so we're pulling off the non-zero digits. It's going to be the 787. And we know to put the decimal point right behind the first digit to keep it a number between 1 and 10. So we're looking at 7.87. Now, if that decimal point is right behind the 7, how many places does it move? Basically, how many times do we need to multiply by 10? And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. 7.87 times 10 to the 11th. Let's do another example, 80,000. So we pull off the non-zero digit, the 8, and where is the decimal point? Remember, it's a good thought to have that we always put that decimal point right behind our first digit. So think about the point being right there, right behind the 8. So if the decimal point is right behind the 8, how many places will we need to move? How many times will we need to multiply by 10? So from right behind the 8, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 jumps we need to make. So we're doing times 10 four times. 8 times 10 to the 4th. So we're looking at 1,328,000. And a quick reminder about those commas that help us read these numbers. We're always starting from the right and every three digits we're putting in a comma. So I'd have one right here between 8 and 0, 1, 2, 3, another one right between the 1 and the 3, so a 1,328,000. But let's put it in scientific notation. We have several digits here that we need to bring over, the 1, the 3, the 2, and the 8, and our decimal point belongs right behind that first digit, 1.328. Now with that point being right behind the 1, how many places will we need to move? Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six places. And so we indicate that by saying we're doing times 10 six times. 1.328 times 10 to the sixth. Now let's quickly talk about doing these problems in the opposite order. What if we started with a number in scientific notation? How would we write it in a standard form? Well, of course, we just had this example. We know it's 1,328,000, but let's go through the steps. What we'll do is we'll take those digits, the 1.328, and we're going to bring those down, and we understand that that decimal point is moving for each time we multiply by 10. So if the point begins right here, I need to move it six places. After the first three places, I've run out of digits to jump. And whenever this happens, we need to just add extra zeros for these extra jumps that we need to make. So I could make one, two, three jumps over the three, the two, the eight. I still need to make three more jumps, so that's going to be through 
three extra zeros. And now we can see all of our digits when this number is not in scientific notation. Let's clean it up a little, 1,328,000. Okay, here are two quick examples for you to do. So pause the video, work through these two, and then restart the video, and we'll look through the answers together. The first example, 6.83 times 10 to the fifth. So I'm bringing over the 6, the 8, the 3, and then thinking about moving my decimal point five places. The first two jumps will take me past the 8 and the 3, and then my third, fourth, fifth jumps are going to be through zeros. So we'll clean this up, and we're looking at 683,000. The next one, 9 times 10 to the 9th, so I'm jotting down the 9. I know that my point currently is right here behind the 9. So my 9 jumps that I have to make are actually going to end up all becoming zeros because I've started right behind the 9, no, digit, no digits to jump, so each of these becomes a zero, and we'll throw in those commas, and we've got 9 billion. Now let's talk about what's going on with the small numbers. For our examples, we will use 0 .00036. So let's see if we could read this. This is our tenths place, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, 36 hundred thousandths. And there's our diameter of an electron, 5 femtometers. We know that multiplying by 10 will move our decimal point to the right. So it's actually dividing by 10 that moves our decimal point to the left. So the idea is basically the same, but we just need to make a little adjustment to talk about our decimal point being moved to the left to make a very small number instead of moving the decimal point to the right to make a big number. We still want to pull off those digits that are non-zero, so we're taking the 3 and the 6. Still, we have this rule that we like to keep a number between 1 and 10, so put the point right behind that first digit. We've got 3.6. Now, if that point is between the 3 and the 6, how many places does it have to move? Well, we can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 places we have to move, but to indicate that we're moving to the left, well, for one, if you're saying, couldn't I just make this multiply into a divide and say I'm doing 3.6 divided by 10 to the fourth, I'd say, yes, for sure, mathematically that works. But our scientific notation, we're always using a multiply, so the way we indicate the divide is by using a negative exponent. So the negative exponent tells us that we're moving our point to the left, and it's really because we're doing a divide by 10. So if we're using a negative exponent to say we're moving our decimal point to the left, and if our decimal point right now is between the 3 and the 6, how many places are we moving it to the left? So in this problem, 1, 2, 3, 4. In scientific notation, we'll write 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And a negative exponent is doing a divide, but we can basically think a negative exponent we're using for small numbers because the negative exponent is telling us move the decimal point to the left. So our next example, the five quadrillionth meters, we're going to pull off our non-zero digit, the five, and where is our decimal point currently? It's right behind the five, so I'll put my point right here behind the five, and how many places will it need to move to land all the way out here where it is with this original number? So. This is many, one, two, three, I counted it earlier, 15 places. So five times 10 to the negative 15 for all these 15 jumps we have to make to the left to get our decimal point from behind the five back to its original spot all the way out here. 15 jumps, five times 10 to the negative 15. So now let's talk about going the other way with small numbers. If we start with the number in scientific notation, how do we go back to writing it in that standard notation? Pretty similar to what we were doing with the large numbers. I'll pull off the, the digits that I see here, the 2.3, just bring down the 2 and the 3, and understand that our point currently, our decimal point is right between the 2 and the 3, but how many places and in which direction are we moving it? Three places, and it's a negative exponent, so we're moving it to the left to make a small number. We'll move it one place over the 2, and just like before, if we have to jump through space, we need to add extra zeros there. So our first jump across the 2, 
The next two jumps are going to be across zeros. It will leave us with 0 .00, 0 0.0023, or this one is, if this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, 23 ten thousandths. Next example, 9 times 10 to the negative 4. So we're going to bring over the 9. We know where the point is currently. It's right behind the 9. And we need to make four jumps to the left because we've got a negative exponent, a small number. Our first jump is over the 9. And then three more jumps over zeros. So we end up with 9 ten thousandths. OK, so here's the set of practice problems for you to try. Pause the video, jot these four numbers down, write them in scientific notation, and then restart the video. We'll talk about the answers. First example, 36,200. I'm bringing over those non-zero digits, 362. I've got the decimal point right behind the first digit, the 3. And now, how many places would it need to move if it's in between the 3 and the 6, and it needs to end up back here behind the last 0. So it's looking like 4 jumps, 3.62 times 10 to the 4th. Next one, 0. 0.0000516. So we're pulling off the non-zero digits, 516. Decimal point right behind the 5. How many places are we moving it? So a couple things to remember. Number one, we've got a small number. We're moving our decimal point to the left. So this will be a negative exponent. And how many jumps do we need? One, two, three, four, five. 5. 5.16 times 10 to the negative fifth. Next one, 80,000. Let's bring over the eight. If the decimal point is right behind the eight, how many jumps do we need? One, two, three, four. 8 times 10 to the 4th. And the last one, 2 thousandths. Let's bring over the non-zero digit, the 2. We know the point is right behind that 2. So how many jumps and in which direction? Looks like 3 to the left. And we know that's 2 times 10 to the negative 3rd. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that some operations were easier to accomplish with numbers that were in scientific notation. And we won't get too heavily into that just yet. We're just doing an introduction this time. But I did want to give you one quick example. So we have two numbers in scientific notation, 3.25 times 10 to the fifth and 2.4 times 10 to the seventh. And we want to multiply these two together. And a way that we can accomplish this would be that we multiply these number parts, the 3.25 times 2.4. It would equal 7.8. And what we have to think about here is that the only operations we have, aside from these powers of 10, are multiply. So I can multiply in any order. I can multiply the 3.25 times the 2.4. And then I can multiply the 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 7th. And here, this 10 to the 5th is basically 10 times 10 times 10, 5 times. And now we're about to multiply 7 more 10s to it. So we've got 10 multiplied 5 times here and 7 times there for a total of 12 times. So our answer in scientific notation, 7.8 times 10 to the 12th. And if we had these numbers written out with all those extra zeros, it would be, I don't know, just a more uncomfortable problem to have to work through. And as we work with more and more numbers that are large and in scientific notation, we really start to see the value of how easy it is to accomplish many of these operations, really especially multiply and divide.